Natasha. Yes. Hi. Hi, Jeannie. You look so pretty today. Today. (laughs) (laughs) We're not in pajamas. (laughs) Quarantine, quarantine days. (laughs) Yes, we do our best. Okay, so uh, today's podcast, um, we're talking about Rock Island specifically, and I want to ask you a question. Okay. Rock Island uh, wedding venue. How did you choose your venue? My venue, we actually didn't have a wedding venue. As you know, we did everything very personal to us. So we went with a family friend who owns a restaurant and Mm -hmm. we did it at a very high-end restaurant and we just transformed Mm -hmm. it into our venue and brought in a dance floor and DJ and lighting and stuff. So you had you eaten there before? Had you gone there before? Oh yes, it was it was the place that we would go to for a very special occasion. Okay, and so now the- um, because we got married in Florida, now it's our and where we would go for, to celebrate our anniversary. Oh. But now if we actually go to Florida at the same time and we have a night together, then we we do go back as a like celebratory. So there's dinner. definitely there there was definitely a sentiment behind very you know, much your selection. Yeah, same with Connected. me. I actually had gone to many. Um, Weddings there prior. Um, I knew the owners, not personally, but I knew of them. And I just had such, you know, there was great reviews. And I, I'm all about reviews, especially people I know personally. So it was it was an easy, easy choice for me. So you had seen it through the guest perspective. Mm-hmm. That was what, and I wanted to do that. Now, you never know. <laughs> the weddings that you had attended, were they close friends of yours or were they more of acquaintances? Because I always wondered if using the same venue as a close friend or a sibling, if that seems too close. Yeah. If you should, if you should, if you should go a little further. And, and you know, as a bride, thing. sometimes you want you want to stand out a little bit. You want something different, right? Um, sure. No, they were acquaintances actually. They weren't okay. really really close friends, but 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 enough where I would trust their opinion on the food and you know the service. So for me, it was it was a no brainer. Okay. On today's podcast, we have Carly Manny from Rock Island Lake Club. Uh, We've been working with Rock Island for many years, so welcome Carly. And today we're going to be talking about Rock Island and specifically some details about how to select your venue when you're you're wedding planning. Welcome to our podcast. So, you're engaged. Now what? Hi Carly. (laughs) Hi Carly. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Of course. We have been working, for everyone who's listening, with Rock Island for many, many years, and I'm so happy now to actually put a face with uh, the experience (laughs) that we have when when, uh, producing our weddings at the venue. So welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Carly, so this industry, let's start start with like what what got you into this industry? What do you do at Rock Island? That sort of thing. Sure. Um, So getting into this industry actually kind of fell into my lap. Um, My cousin used to work at Rock Island as the day of coordinator. She's, um, I told her I was looking for a new job, just like change up of, you know, change of pace. And she was like, we have an opening for bridal attendant. Like, why don't you come on over? Like, it's super fun. So I came, I interviewed for the bridal attendant position. I got it. Um, I did that for a year and a half. And then the wedding planner position opened up and they were really trying to promote with in instead of going like and trying to find an outside person they asked me if I would be interested and I said yes I was like blown away I was like how did I get here like <laughs> never, never did I imagine being in the wedding industry let alone being a wedding planner in the wedding industry that's right things I always am a strong believer that things will work themselves out the way they're supposed to yeah, in life. Yes. Yes. You know, you I always, I, I was just going to say, whenever somebody says that, you know, something fell into their lap or, or something like that, I just feel like it, it's so meant to be, you know, that that's, there's your answer. So yeah. that's so cool. Carly, are you married? I'm not. I'm actually engaged to you be You are? Yes. Um, was Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. I was supposed to get married this May, actually in two weeks on the 17th. That's, uh, you know. Not happening, really. Anymore. Now, where is your venue? Are you doing it at Rock Island or that's a little I, too close yes, to home? I am. Okay. Um, I, it was so funny because when I first got engaged, I was like, no way do I want to get married at the place I work. And now I can't imagine not getting married at the place I work. Like, it's sure. just it just makes it so much more, like, comfortable, at ease. I don't have to yes. worry about anything because I know everyone. So 
I, I think it'll be married. emotional. It will be emotional for them as well because they've sort of raised you yeah, to yeah, who you I'm are. So and, excited. Yeah. Um, and again, there's something to be said about knowing everybody. There's such a trust factor there. You know that they're going to take such good care of you. It's going to be such a beautiful day. You know, it's going to go smooth. It's like you, you're so you're so chill with it, you know? Exactly. Yeah. Now I think about it and I'm like, I can't imagine like getting married at a venue, not knowing anyone and just like yeah. trusting all these people, you know? Yeah, it's hard. <laughs> everybody. <laughs> like, yes. Yes. Sure. Yeah. Uh, okay. Question for you. So you said that when you first started working with Rock Island, you were a bridal attendant. What is this? Um, basically, I'm um, the bride's built in best friend for the day. Uh, I get her whatever she may need at any point in time. I kind of follow her around throughout the whole day. Um, if any of your people from your company, I know whoever's been there, they've seen me around on that side of things. So during photos and video, I'm with the bride and groom. Um, I have my little emergency uh, purse on me with bobby pins, band-aids, hairspray, whatever it may be. And I kind of am just there to help out and be like an extra pair of hands for the bride. Um, you know, it's, it's a lot on your wedding day to think about everything. And then you get put in this big dress and you're like, forget how to walk. And Wait, that's, like, I have a question about this. Yeah. Do you, do you have to bustle the gowns? Yes. And what? like, what? I don't know anything about bustle the gowns. Like, I, I mean. But how do you know? Is this a, <laughs> right. Like, aren't all the dresses different? How do you do that? So they are. And it was really funny when I first started, I'm like, I'm never going to be able to do this. This is crazy. And then as I got on, like moving on, I was just like, you know, it's all buttons and loops or just ties. Like, it's all normal things just a matter of how they go together. Intertwined. Yeah, exactly. And I came to find, you know, a lot of bustles are very similar, if not the same. So I kind of just check out the dress the morning of, like prepare myself for what the bustle is going to be and then just get in and do it. But it is definitely an intimidating job. Yeah, I'm <laughs> sure. I, I, that, oh, yeah. that would intimidate me the most. I feel like I'd pass out. That's why I was never a makeup artist, a hairstylist <laughs> or anything like that. Let me because- just- Dive in underneath your gown. Give me a few. No, I'm That's serious. Don't no. mind me. <laughs> don't I, mind me. I'm just going to be under your gown for a few minutes. Like, it's I, horrible. Yeah. I, I did my friend's makeup once, and I, it looked like she had a black eye. Oh, no. <laughs> she like, and she was trying to be polite. So, yeah. I would, oh, my like, gosh. So, bless you. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So, wait. Does a bridal attendant come standard, or this is, like, the extra perk that you can – option into having a bridal attendant um i come standard with the package with the venue uh whether you get married on site or not you just yeah they're there for you so brought you went from bridal attendant to day of coordinator planner um so i went from i kind of skipped i went from bridal attendant to wedding planner um there is day of coordinator in there yeah i kind of started at the bottom now i'm at the top (laughs) i'm just kind of wow okay awesome tell us what you do um, so I, I'm wedding planners. I just, um, I'm with the couple from the day they sign to the day they get married. And I'm kind of their go-to person for any questions, whether it's venue related or just wedding related in general, um, any opinions they may need, guidance, things like that. I, I help them plan and keep everything in, in line and put it all together for the big day. And then that's when I hand them over to my day of team. Um, which are my day of coordinators and the mater D. So I kind of huh. take them through the whole process till the end and then send them so off. Jean, the she's of. us. She, you're exactly yeah. us. Basically. <laughs> with with <laughs> what we do. Yeah. And, but we have our production team is involved earlier in the process. About a, yeah. a, They get involved about a month before. Okay, yeah. So yeah. very similar to how you guys handle things. It's like okay. all the everything leading up to the big day. Yeah. So very personal concierge like service where you are there for little odds and ends that they may have, such as, hey, when should my makeup artist come and what time can we get in and this and that. Yeah, exactly. Things like that. Um, anything from that to just like, hey, I need to talk to someone. You know, I yeah. I've become very close friends with a lot of these brides just because you know, they need someone to go to who's not going to be opinionated before they even ask the yeah. question. Um, sure. They're very, something unique for myself is because I'm also going through this process as well. They really think I know best. Um, you know, sometimes <laughs> I might, I don't think I always do, but they're always like, Carly, what are you doing? You know, if they're like lost, they're like, well, how are you doing it? And it kind of yeah. helps guide them through. What are your hours? I work nine to five. Mm-hmm. Um, 
five days a week. So I'm off on Tuesdays and Saturdays. I am there for some weddings during the day because I'll work. We have Friday, Sunday weddings, Mm -hmm. um, but I'm not, I'm not needed day off. So it's, Mm -hmm. uh, that's again, day of team. They take care of everything. Um, so yeah, just like normal work hours. Mm -hmm. And then every once in a while I'll, I'll stay late for something, you know? Yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. That's gotta be cool to see brides that you've worked so closely with throughout their planning process to see them everything come into fruition and see them on their wedding day. It's like yeah, it's your so little exciting. ducklings are on their own now. Do you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It's very personal, you know, because you build a relationship with these people, you become friends with a lot of them. And then, you, you know, this is like their graduation and then they get married and you might see them again later, but you know, most of the time, not really. Nice. Yeah. But, yeah. With us, with us, it's cool because, you know, I'm always curious to see their wedding video. Yeah. You know, when it's all over, I want to see them with their makeup on. I want to see the gown. I want to see, <laughs> you yeah, know, I just yeah. want to see it all come to fruition. So the final product. Yeah. So, so talk to us about Rock Island. Where is it? Um, you know, and tell us a little bit about the history of it, if you would, you know, how long it's been around and paint the picture of Rock Island for us. Sure. So Rock Island is located in Sparta, New Jersey. Um, it's been a wedding venue and been Rock Island for seven years now. It, the building itself used to be a restaurant. It started as a Greek restaurant and then became like either a French or an Italian restaurant, something like along those lines. And then our owners bought it and turned it into a wedding venue. Um, it's this beautiful building. It's on uh, Glen Road. I don't know if anybody listening knows that area, but you kind of don't really see it unless you're looking for it because it's just right off this main road. It's kind of, it's right there, but it just blends in with the scenery. Um, on the backside, it's on this beautiful lake. It has a little beach area, has a dock, just very peaceful, very, you know, rustic woodsy, intimate. Very romantic. Yeah. Yes, romantic. It's not too big, so that's also nice. You know, it has that romantic, intimate feel. Um, you know, it's, that rustic vibe that most people are looking for um, in wedding venues nowadays. Um, Just very nice, the woods surrounding it. Beautiful. You know, that's a word that comes up a lot with our couples. Uh, We always ask them what they loved about their venue because Mm -hmm. that's really insightful as to who they are as people and will then help with storytelling. But with Rock Island, the number one thing that comes up is intimate. Yeah. It's a really intimate yes. venue and our crew really likes uh to working there as well. Speaking so, of intimate, it's, it's it's a one room. Is it how many how many rooms in in um in this venue? It's uh one. So it's technically two rooms, but one ballroom, one cocktail hour. Okay. It's okay. a one wedding at a time place. It's a yep. one wedding a day place. So mm-hmm. this building and this venue is yours for the whole day. You're not rushed to come in or leave at any Perfect. point. Perfect. It's yours for the whole day. Yeah. And and what's the guest capacity? Like what's we the max? We maxed out at 196. Um, so okay. just so under 200. Intimate. Okay. Yes. Great. How many weddings do you guys do a year? We do about 100. Um, last year we did, we did just 100. And then for this coming year, we were supposed to have about 115. Now, you know, things have changed. But we're in that 100 to 115 range typically. Mm-hmm. Wow. And and so you are pretty busy year round. I'm sure you'll have like three and four wedding days on certain weekends. And then yeah. maybe you'll have like a January, February month where maybe you'll see like one wedding a weekend or skip a weekend or something like that. Is that right? Yes. Yeah, so we're actually open for 10 months out of the year for weddings. Um, ah. We typically take January and February off to do any kind of renovations or refurbishments. Oh, cool. Okay. Because we are um, purely more an outdoor venue. People don't really want to get married at Rock Island in the snow. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Um, We will see things changing now coming this year because everything that happened, we had to open up January and February for 2021 just to be able to get all these uh, weddings in. So we will Mm -hmm. see winter weddings and early spring weddings being a bigger thing. So that'll be kind of cool to see how yeah. other couples, you know, work with that. Winter weddings are also beautiful. Yeah. At Rock Island people, I always love when the couples want to go outside and take pictures in the snow and, you know, it's, they're just breathtaking. Yeah, um, we do too. But yeah, normally we're 10 months a year. March and April are kind of slow. May through August are like the peak months. And then we get back up October, November, again, peak months. Um, then December, we always get a handful. But yeah, it's 
busiest time is May, June, and then September, October for sure. I'm curious too, um, when, when you mentioned slower times, because you know, all, every sort of um, industry has that, um, <laughs> is how are the rates? Are the rates, do they vary based on certain months during the year? Yes, they do. So um, off peak months being like March, April, they're going to be mm-hmm. cheaper. And then June and May are going to be more expensive. And mm-hmm. then same with the fall is going to be more expensive than the winter. And then um, the way like minimums work, it's day of the week. So okay. uh, Saturdays are most popular. So they're going to be the highest minimum Then Fridays, then Sundays. And that's okay. kind of how the pricing goes too throughout each month. Saturdays are always going to be the highest mm-hmm. um, price day of the, of the month of the week and then Friday, then Sunday. Mm-hmm. Got it. So if someone were looking at a Friday wedding or a Thursday wedding, the minimum might be less than a Saturday wedding, but is it also cheaper per head? Yes. It yes, is. it is. Okay. Yeah. Um, like give us an example. How che- How much cheaper uh, is it? And, I, and I'm sure this, there's a lot of variables, so you don't have to say a specific amount uh, because, you know, you may have a, a July Saturday wedding, which is going to be very different than a July in, like you said, March. Or sorry, a Saturday in March. So, yes. you know, but but what's the biggest difference? If you're looking at a summer wedding uh, versus like a, like a Friday versus a Saturday versus a Sunday, is it like a 10%? Is it more? W- what are you looking at, you know, difference wise? Um, yeah, it really depends. I'd say um, Saturdays are usually like $20 more per person than a Sunday and about like $10 more per person than a Friday. So Saturdays are the most expensive, Sundays are next, and then Fridays. Uh, flip that. Uh, oh, Sundays okay. Sundays are the cheapest. And then, so Sundays are the Saturday, cheapest. Friday, Sunday, yeah. Then then Sunday, I mm-hmm. see. Um, any Thursday weddings? We do get a handful of Thursdays, and Thursdays are priced as Sundays. Ah, okay. Uh, that makes the sense. Same, yeah, same level. Mm-hmm. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Great. Um, so that was different times. Of the, also, like, when somebody comes into the venue, you said they have it for the whole day. So mm-hmm. – let do you have a standard time of what time the ceremony should start or is this based on time of year because of sunset that yeah, sort of so thing this, or is it really up to the bride and their team yeah so it it varies um we always leave it up to the couple you know when do you see yourself getting married um i would say most popular time is 5:30 start time for ceremony and then of course that will adjust throughout time of year with the sunset yeah. um the latest anyone can start their ceremony is 6.30 because there is a midnight curfew with the town of Sparta. Um, mm-hmm. As far as like earliest time, they can get married as early as 11 a.m. Um, we don't really see those ever. But, you know, if someone came in and wanted a brunch or like an early Sunday wedding, that's totally doable. We've done a handful um, around like 1, 1.30 that people will do, you know, in the spring or the summer and have a nice kind of chill Sunday, uh, just like do the whole day for their wedding. What I like is you guys are really flexible. You're not so – it doesn't seem like a very corporate environment. It's structured and organized, but you seem very approachable and, like, thinking. Like, you have your wheels going and you're wor- you're willing to work with, with couples on what's in their hearts and what works best for them. Yes. We're very much um, – you know, we want to make sure that this day is theirs. They're making the day. Obviously, you know, we have some kind of plan and order we have to follow, but we really want to make each day unique to the couple. Um, so we're not no strict or hard things. The only hard um, timeline things we have to follow is the midnight curfew because of the town. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sure. Now, do you guys do an extended cocktail hour and a shorter reception? What's that structure? We do. So our standard cocktail hour time is an hour and a half mm-hmm. with a three and a half hour reception. That's um, right. We do and- that because cocktail hour is the favorite of the wedding. Yeah. So. We like to, you know, give them a little extra time and an hour goes by so fast. So you know, having that little extra helps. I like that 90 minute cocktail hour. I mean, you know, especially when couples are taking photos prior, which they usually are, at least it gives, mm-hmm. it might give them some time to get in there. Yes. Eat something. Yes. Say hello. You know, yeah, have exactly. a drink. <laughs> That's right. You know. Yeah. And it's the most social because once you come into the reception, there's like a certain formality that gets layered on and exactly. until you until you've eaten you dessert. Do. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, for sure. Now, Rock Island, are there at, there are additional rooms? People don't stay the night there. It's simply the reception area, the cocktail area, 
And then I'm assuming in the colder months, the cocktail area or the reception area doubles as the ceremony area and then you swap it? Correct. Yes. Okay. So they'll get married indoors in inclement weather. Mm -hmm. Then while they're having their cocktail hour, everything gets transferred over to the reception, which also having an hour and a half, I'm sure helps. Yes, that definitely does help too. <laughs> do the, do the yeah. big, you know, trans, transformation. I'm sure the guests yes. come in and they're like, what? I, just, I know, they're like, this is the same? <laughs> like, we were just here. Yeah. That's right. Um, what sort of services do you guys offer? Is there lighting included? Um, you know, coming in as a bride, what am I booking? Like, mm-hmm. I'm booking my wedding, um, whether or not you're having the ceremony is there, is it's either going to be on site or off site. And then uh, clearly every couple does cocktail hour and reception. But what else? Yeah. What are some of the yeah, add-ons? What are the, what are the extras like? Yeah. I remember when I got married, when the cocktail hour, they had so many amazing things to offer, especially with the menu. We wanted everything. Of course, we didn't get everything. But <laughs> <laughs> what like what is – what's the most – yeah, what what like what, what Natasha said, what services do you offer? And I want to know too um, – What's the most common extra, if you will, that a couple will add to their cocktail? Sure. Hour? Yeah. So we do, yeah, for every wedding, they get cocktail hour and reception. Um, I'd say 90% of our couples do ceremony on site as well. Um, they get, when you book Rock Island, whether you're getting married on site or not, you get an additional two hours included in your package for free to come take pictures, you know, mingle, whatever you, whatever um, you prefer. And then, um, all-inclusive, top shelf, open bar, so you don't have to worry about that. We do have the catering on site as well, so we take care of all the food. Um, as far as extras go, most popular is definitely uplighting for like ambiance enhancements. Um, you know, every couple's like, I need to have those lights to have the craziest, biggest party, you know, dance all night kind of feel. And then I'd say besides uplighting, the other two most popular packages are the day of packages. So that would be our bridal suite package for the ladies. That's where they come in um, at 9 a.m. in the morning. They get ready on site. Hair and makeup come to Rock Island. We have this beautiful bridal suite um, upstairs. It's all it's the only thing on the top floor. It's for all the girls to hang out. We provide them with breakfast and lunch. They have open bar from the time they get here. And it's just kind of, you know, yeah, you do your whole day there. You're in one place. If you're running behind, you don't have to worry because you're already here. So you don't have to get into a car and travel if hair and makeup's taking a little longer than usual. Um, and then we have the one for the guys. It's called the Lakeside Lounge. Um, gets the guys uh, uh, to Rock Island six hours prior to ceremony start time. Guys take 10 minutes to get ready. So, you know, we keep That's them right. busy. We, we have open bar for them. We give them lunch. They have a PlayStation uh, set up in a little game room oh, cool. with shuffleboard. If it's a nice day out, we'll set up lawn games for them. Uh, and it's just kind of like a hangout day for the guy. And, you know, you don't have to worry about the guys now because they're here. You know, you know, they're just downstairs. So <laughs> the, the boys' room is all the way downstairs on the cocktail hour um, floor. And then the ladies are upstairs on the third floor with the ballroom in between. So no chances of anybody running into each other before they should um, because we keep them nice and separated. But I would say those the two day of packages and uplighting are definitely like the most popular. We see them at least once a week. And can you separate the day of? Can can the ladies get ready there, but the guys get ready off site to save a little yes. bit of money, or is it is it like all or none? You can. There are two separate packages, so um, girls can get ready, guys can get ready at the hotel and just show up for pictures. Um, or guys could get ready there, girls could get ready, you know, however they prefer. They're two different packages. Um, so it's one for each. Okay. Now you said that it was a former restaurant. So does that mean that all of the food is made on premises? It's, it's, it's an on-site catering yes. facility. Okay. Yep. We have our own in-house, um, kitchen staff. They're awesome. All our food is like Rock Island specific. Wow. And talk to us about the menu. Is there a specific sure, a- uh, type of menu? Is it, like you said, it was Greek before. Um, is it really versatile? What if you have a specific culture that comes in? Do you tailor menus, allergies, vegans, all of that? Talk to us about that. Sure. Uh, we have a very, very extensive, versatile menu. Um, our food is one thing we're like known for. Like, you know, someone goes to a wedding at Rock Island and the first thing they talk about is the food. Um as far as like what we offer and what we include, it's just this big long list. Um, for cocktail hour, you get eight past hors d'oeuvres, 
um, and a small plate that gets passed around, you get um, three chafing dishes, two carving stations, three live captain stations. Oh my god, I'm 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 pregnant. I'm getting oh hungrier goodness. right now. Oh, that's. <laughs> <laughs> I know, and it's like almost dinner time too. So, oh, and and those who haven't seen Jeannie, if if you're if you're watching this, you can see her. But if you're listening in, she's about seventeen pounds soaking wet, so she could use a good meal. <laughs> Yes. Keep going. I love this. Music to my yeah. ears. So that's all that comes included for cocktail hour. And it's as far as like types of food, it's everything and anything in between. Um, we have different like Asian stations. We have Italian. Um, we throw in some Irish, you know, we have like an Irish corned beef as one of the that's so cute. Stations. I never saw yeah, that. So mm-hmm. It's, it's um, really cool because what we do too, when I sit with a couple to build their menu, I really try to make sure that they get a little bit of everything. Um, you know, you get those few that are like, we only want like Italian food at our wedding. And then, you know, there's no twist in their arm, but we, I really, we take our time and we go through and it's like, okay, if you have mac and cheese in the chafing dishes, you don't want to have it in your past orders, like things like that. We kind of get a nice wide variety of everything. Um, as far as different cultural things, we've had a, a few times now where couples have come in and they'd be like, you don't have a station like this, but is this possible? And one of them that we just did was an Indian style station. So they wanted something, you know, close to home. They brought in a few recipes that weren't too crazy from like their family that they gave wow. to chefs. That's so and, those are really open and flexible because yeah, I've never heard yeah. of that before. That's, yeah. that's remarkable. Yeah, our chefs too, they're the same kind of way. They're always open to new ideas and different things to try. And they, again, we want to make sure that this wedding is the couple, you know, mm-hmm. it, it really shows who they are. So we'll do things like that. Um, when it comes to dinner, we do uh, a salad and bread, and then you get a choice of five entrees. So that's something that people are always like, what? Like, I only usually get to pick from two. <laughs> Three. Sure. <laughs> yeah. So the five different categories are you get to choose from a beef, a chicken, a seafood, a vegetarian. And then the fifth category is either lamb or pork. Mm. So the couple would choose one of those two and they choose one from each of the other categories. And then the guests now have five options to choose from. Do they get to taste the food? The couples do. Yes, we do tastings um, six to eight months prior to their wedding day. Uh, It's a nice get together night for the couple and we allow them to bring up to four guests with them free of charge. And it's kind of just like a nice little night out. We do um, a mini version of our food. Obviously we can't serve them some of everything or no one would ever (laughs) be able to leave. Um, So they get like a very condensed cocktail hour uh, style for the start of the tasting. And then when it comes to dinner, we set up six different entrees, one for each category. And then we always throw in a little bonus one and we serve them family style. So we put like one at each table, oh, nice. have them take a bite and pass it on. So that way, again, no one's stuffing themselves with six different dinners. Um, now, awesome. do you guys do a Viennese hour? We do. So we do a Viennese display um, that comes included. An ice cream Sunday bar also comes included. And then we include the wedding cake from Palermo's Bakery. So that's the only thing that comes off site to Rock Island. Is oh, the, the cake. cake. Okay. It's the wedding cake. Um, talk to us about a little uh, schedule. When do you typically cut the cake? So you said that you usually recommend a ceremony start at 530. So that would mean that their cocktail hour is from 6 to 730. Mm-hmm. Right. And yep. reception starts at 730. What time are they cutting the cake? And when do you guys roll out the Viennese hour and Sunday bar? Sure. Um, so cocktail hour ends at 730. We're, we're usually serving dinner at about 840. That, you know, takes a little bit. So probably I'd say about 915 um, ish is like potential earliest times to cut the cake. I always give the couple the option. Do you want to cut the cake right after dinner and then just, you know, go into partying to, from there on out? Or do you want to go to partying, have your cake cutting be like a little intermission for the dancing? Um, Do it that way. Most of the time they're always like, do it after dinner, get it out of the way, like just keep going. So it's usually um, cake cutting around 9.15 and then uh, dessert would go out at about 10 o'clock, which is one hour before the end of the night. They would end at 11. So they get the Viennese hour. We don't do like the whole, okay, now come to the Viennese room and like have dessert. You know, it's kind of more, 
laid back um, buffet style. You know, we just have different desserts all displayed on different tables um, for them to be able to uh, pick from. And then they have the ice cream sundae (laughs) bar that goes out as well. Sounds oh amazing. God, I'm so hungry right now. I love it. I know. <laughs> so, all right, let's let's pause on food for yeah, a second. I know. So, um, what do you guys do like if it rains? If if you know July wedding, everything's planned outside. What do you do if it rains? What's your plan B? Sure. If it rains, um, the only thing that's really getting affected is ceremony. Ceremony is the one thing that it's not like you can't get away with having it outside. Um, if it rains, if that's the case, we do ceremony in the cocktail. Uh, sorry, in the ballroom. Um, we take all the tables, push them to like one end of the room. We hang this, uh, pipe and drape system up. It's with an ivory curtain. And then we have an archway identical to the one that we have outside that we set up indoors. Mm -hmm. And we just kind of do the whole ceremony in the ballroom. Um, in our ballroom, we have all open windows. So there's no, um, you know, all the natural lights coming in. We don't cover those. So you still get the view of the lake, still get the natural light. And then we just do it from there. And then we have um, up to the bridal suite, we have a grand staircase. That's where the uh, couple and the bridal party would walk down. Nice. Wow. It sounds pretty. Either yeah. or. And like yeah. when when do you make that call and who makes that call? Sure. So we make that call about uh, we ask that they have a definite answer up to 40 minutes prior. So like we cut it close because being in Sparta too, it could be pouring that morning and beautiful that yeah. afternoon. So yeah. we always tell them, you know, like don't panic if you wake up and it's raining on your wedding day. Um, we've had a lot of times too where it's like thunderstorms and craziness at home and then they get to Rock Island and it's beautiful, like nothing ever happened. Um, so we leave it up to the couple though. So it's ultimately their decision in the end. We're never going to be like, you can't have your ceremony outside. Um, we're going to let them make that call. If it's just like, like drizzling and they're okay with it, then we're going outside. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's up to them and they have up until like the very end to decide whether they want it indoors or outdoors. Just and just a general question about, the, you know, your advice on this when, when couples are, are searching for their venues. Um, how far in advance would you recommend that a couple – visit you or reach out or any, 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 any venue at that? Sure. I always say, um, about a year and a half out. Um, that's like kind of the general, most of the time when we see people coming in looking, obviously, you know, you have ones who are like, they get engaged, they're searching tomorrow. You know, it's just like, Mm -hmm. they want to just get it done out of the way. I will say we do see couples doing that more and more, um, Mm -hmm. nowadays. It's more like we're engaged Yes, you know, we got engaged today and we're looking for 2022, but we're getting our venue now, you know. And yeah. People are definitely being more cautious and planning further out than, you know, back back a few years, it was like plan your wedding in a year and that was good. Now you can't even find like a venue or with any open dates within within so a year. I always yeah. Interesting. Say yeah. at least a year and a half out. Um obviously if you're flexible to a time of year and day of week and things like that, you can do it a year out. Um, but if you have a specific date or a specific time of year in mind, the earlier, the better. Yeah. So have you ever had any like shotgun weddings, like where a couple's like, are you, so are you guys available next weekend by chance? Like (laughs) what's the shortest amount of, of time somebody, because we have gotten those calls. We have, we have gotten, Oh, I'm sure. (laughs) Hey, can you come out to our wedding on Saturday? Uh, we need a photographer and a videographer. And we're like, Mm -hmm. no, no, like these take a while to produce. (laughs) Like super spontaneous. So Yeah. yeah, the earliest or like the shortest amount of time we had someone book a wedding was two months prior. They came in March. They were like, Hey, we want to get married by the end of May. What do you have between now and then? We had um, the Friday of Memorial Day weekend open. They're like, okay, cool, book us. See you then. Wow. And it was just kind of like, we were shocked. They were <laughs> cool, you know? They were just like, see you in two months. This um, whole like arduous planning process is just yeah. condensed and, you know, know. get it over with. <laughs> we're like, if you can do it, then, you know, it's, it's all on you. Um, so we've definitely seen that once. Um and then we've had uh, a handful of ones where they book six months prior and they're just, they, you know, they, they're able to do that planning so condensed and calmly. So they're just yeah. like, yeah, let's just get it over with. So that's right. I've seen that. Yeah. 
we've seen shorter engagements when people are wanting to start their families and, um, you know, if, if somebody's in the military and they have like this little window of, you know, when they may be deployed or mm-hmm. teachers, mm-hmm. they want to do, you know, they have the window of summertime, they want to do their wedding and, you know, before things get crazy with the school year. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Definitely. So we've seen shorter engagements mm-hmm. for, you know, for those reasons. Um, mm-hmm. You know, if if you're a couple and, you know, you're objectively, so so we've learned a lot about Rock Island, but just objectively, if you're a bride listening, what advice would you give to brides and grooms? Um, <laughs> hello, all two of you that are in <laughs> listening. <laughs> but, you know, what advice would you give our listeners to, you know, how should they approach a venue? What are some of the right questions for them to ask? Yeah. Um, I would suggest definitely doing your research before like booking a tour and going to a venue because there's so many wedding venues out there. You need to be able to just eliminate some just from like researching them and being like, okay, that, that won't, you know, that's not us. That's not our style. Uh, That's out of our budget. That's too big, whatever the cases may be. But when you go and do the tours, ask those questions, ask um, what the max capacity is, um, you know, ask if the minimums are the same for each day and, you know, things like pricing, when, when's your busy season, when's your off season, um, ask about the package, what comes included. That's a big thing that people don't uh, like either remember or they don't realize that going through the package, all these things you're talking about aren't included. Some packages aren't like just straightforward with this is not included. Here's the price. You know, they kind of like to trick you. Um, a big one that we are very adamant about knowing that we don't have any hidden fees to ask about, like, is there a mater D fee? Is there a, um, you know, a, a bar service fee? Is there an on-site just coming onto the pros- uh, property fee? Things like that. People will always get slammed with those, you know, two weeks before your wedding because mm-hmm. then you just kind of keep it out of the, you know, the conversation until needed. If it's not a uh, question, they won't bring yeah. it up until it's time. Um, so just definitely ask about like, what are your fees? What are the additional fees besides the per person price? Mm-hmm. Because that, you know, that gets factored into the budget and you have to know that before you sign a contract and, you know. And you don't want any surprises, that's for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. Uh, You know, other than cost, is there anything, what do you think is the most important thing to your couples that come to the venue? Definitely, um, like, vibe and style. That's the the biggest thing, you know, everyone has like their dream, like I want to get married on a lake or I want my wedding venue to look like this. So that's the biggest thing because people say too, like rustic, I want a rustic wedding, but rustic is so broad and like there's so many different rustics nowadays Mm -hmm. that like just like coming in and seeing the building, then they're like, okay, this is the rustic I want. Or, you know, I want a little bit more elegant rustic, but definitely the vibe um like the ambiance yeah Yeah. Yeah. the ambiance um just like the feel like you know if you walk in and you could see yourself getting married there yeah I know Mm -hmm. this this would be a good fit um so couples they really kind of take that in and they're like wow like this is so us um you know things like that or I get a lot too couples will come in and they'll be like this building is set up like our house like you guys have the same kind of decor and oh my gosh I have that table you know things like yeah. that and then they're yeah. like this is so meant to be um but yeah definitely the the feel the vibe and ambiance of the actual venue yeah well, so informative so good. yeah <laughs> I, I felt like I already knew so much about Rock Island, but I didn't. So thank you for sharing. This was great course, because yeah. I always hear it through through the mouths of our couples and they always speak so highly of it, um, you know, and they've painted a picture for us. And of course, we see it through our, our I mean, creative work. One of, our, one, one of my favorite videos um, we shot there, Julie and Tim. Okay. Yes. And I always look, I always watch their video. It's so romantic and fun. And I Aww. always like, yeah. Yeah, Hi. Julie. I now I want to. I will. I'll look that up and watch it. Julie now, and Tim. Too. They did. They did a beautiful first look on the dock. Ah, oh, mm-hmm. it was nice. so nice. Yeah, it was so yeah, nice. Yeah, for sure. Carly, thank you so much. You're welcome. This is awesome. Yes, thank yeah. you. And and we are in touch. So you know, uh, let course, us know yes. if, if you need anything. We're here for you. And yeah. thanks again for coming. Always. Thank you guys for having me. This was fun. To our listeners, uh, please make sure to follow us. Um, 
actually, follow Rock Island Lake Club. <laughs> follow follow yeah. our guests. Follow Rock Island Lake Club on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. So smart. Mm-hmm. You guys have a Pinterest page. That's or cool. you can visit their, their website at rockislandlakeclub.com. Yes. Please subscribe and rate us on the Apple Podcast. It really helps us, guys. And please make sure to visit our website, podcast.livepicturestudios.com. And please make sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram at livepicturestudios.com. No. Email us. Yeah. At Live Picture Studios. <laughs> Did I say that Instagram. wrong? Instagram. Instagram at Live Picture Studios. <laughs> <laughs> And you can email us as well if you have a, ever have any ideas, subjects that you guys want to hear about. I'm curious to know if we've gotten any of these emails. I would love to read them. Um, email us at podcast at livepicturestudios.com or hashtag LPS podcast with questions on, you know, again, anything that you guys want to share. This episode is recorded by K-Vibe Go Live. This podcast has been produced by Quali, Natalia Delgado, Marcia Rosa, and Mark Falcon and our editor, Nicole Palmetti. And music has been provided by Ian Post and Artlist. Okay, until next time, thanks so much for listening. Bye. Bye Happy planning. Happy planning. <laughs> <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs>